Hello, 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 and welcome to Mathematically Yu-Gi-Oh! Today, we're going to do a full in-depth analysis on how to mathematically make a 60-card deck better than a 40-card deck. But you need to follow these three steps, or else it will not be mathematically better. The first thing I want to talk about, and the first thing that you need, is consistency. Now, it's a big myth that 40-card decks are more consistent than a 60-card decks. Well... I'm going to mathematically show you how to make a 60 card deck just as or even more consistent than a 40 card deck. And you have to use this little trick and I'm going to show you how right now. By jumping and in depth diving into the numbers. Here is the starter card chart. Uh, the raw data if you will. For the consistency ratios of getting a starter card. And what do I mean by that? Well, these numbers right here on the left represent uh, the cards in your deck. This is the percentages of a 40 card deck if you're running the uh, this number of cards and the number on the right is for 60 card decks. So what do I mean by that? I'll just give you an example and it'll probably make sense. If you're running 9 starter cards in your deck, you have a 74% chance to see at least one of them. Meanwhile, if you're running those same 9 cards in a 60 card deck, you'll only have about a 50 or about you'll have exactly a 56.99% chance to see one of them. So what that means is generally you want to run between 11 to 15 starters in a 40 card deck that will get you between an 80 to 90 percent consistency ratio based upon how you like it some people take those numbers and they just put them in a 60 card deck well now you're only getting a 65 to 77 percent uh consistency ratio which is considerably lower and that's why the rumor is perpetuated that a 40 card deck is more consistent However, if you just upped the number of starter cards you had to, let's say, uh, what is it, like 16 to 22, you'll have that same number of uh, consistency uh, percentage as you would in a 40 card deck. And you can even increase it if you wanted to have more consistency than a 40 card deck. So it is a myth that 40 cards are more consistent. Let me show it to you in a graph if that doesn't make sense and you don't if you don't do good with raw numbers. This line right here represents the 60 cards, and this line right here represents uh, the 40 card decks. The orange is 40, and the purple is 60. Now, let's just take an example. So let's, for example, let's say you are running 9 cards, right? Your 9 cards in a 40 card deck will get you a little bit under 75% consistency, well, a 9 cards, if you're running a 60 card deck, gets you a bit above uh, 55, so like 58%, right? You can look at the exact numbers on the other chart consistency ratio, which means me personally, I like to get about an 87% consistency ratio. So I run 30 team cards in my 40 card decks to match that. Then I need to run boop right here. 20 cards to match that consistency and with this graph that I've made you can see how many cards you need to match the consistency or you can use the raw numbers as well and that's the first thing we need to make a 60 card deck better is we get to use the consistency now that we match the consistency of a 40 card deck we now get to explore something that if uh, a six a 40 card deck can't and that's utility what do I mean by that? Well, 60 card decks are well known for being able to use their graveyard as a second hand, making milling and graveyard focused strategies very strong in 60 card decks. You could run the cards you see here, other things like uh, Fairy Tale Snow. Uh, you can even use like Banished if you want. I've seen uh, others use uh, Banished focused strategies like Thunder Dragons. These work well in 60 card decks. Another different thing you could do is protect your garnets in the 60 card decks. Because your deck is so thick, you only have an 8.5% chance to draw a garnet in your 60 card deck. Compared to the 12.5% chance to draw a garnet in a 40 card deck. Which means if you have a deck with cards that you don't want to see because they're hard garnets... You could put them in a 60 card deck and you'll have a less of a chance to see them. Also, I was talking about 
20 card starters. Well, we can run what's called pile decks. 20 card starters might be hard to hit, but we can mix and match different archetypes that don't conflict and put them together in an archetype. So for an example, you could run a 12 card punk engine with an 8 card cash tier engine. Make a 20 card starter, uh, like your 20 card starters, and that's how you can get and mix and match different piles. Maybe throw, uh, destiny hero in if you want to get more uh engines in there and it gives you more toolbox strategies i recommend you look up billy break Holly aronson and jesse cotton they are multiple uh good ycs tops and uh, that use pile decks and you can see what i mean if you're struggling to know what a pile is the third thing we can do to make our decks better is avoid the weaknesses that we have in a 60 card deck the one thing that we don't have that a 40 card do and do is these unnecessary two card combos for example we need to avoid them so what do i mean by that let's take a look at a good one card combo deck would be something like rockets who all they need is a single level four lower dragon monster and they go right into their link they can take their rocket tracer go right into rocket dragon a uh, deck that won't be so good is decks that utilize something like Palmerization, these fusion heavy decks. They would need uh, these two card combos. Because we're running the 60 card decks, it will be unlikely to see those two cards we need. Which is why something that is good that can perpetuate a one card combo makes for a good 60 card deck. Now you could still run fusion centered strategies. For example, Billy Brake was running Shadals. They have a very good fusion engine if you want to run fusions. Also, Branded Fusion, it takes the cards from the deck, so you don't need to worry about... I'm not saying don't run fusions, I'm just saying don't run two-card combos. Don't make for a good 60-card deck. Another thing is don't rely on a single blowout card. So normally it's these board breakers, like Evenly Matched and Dark Ruler No More, uh, in your 60-card decks, because you won't see them if you need them. But if you do need to desperately rely on them, then you could r run a Triple Tactics Thrust, I would recommend running 20 hand traps instead because I'm going to tell you uh, the, what you need is a 20-20-20 ratio as sample if you're running your 60 card deck. Remember, the 20 starter cards for that good uh, consistency. 20 hand traps, right? We're upping the amount of hand traps we have in our deck. So this way, we're also, because remember, if we want to match the consistency of starters, you also need to up the amount of hand traps we run. These can also be board breakers as well. Don't mix and match hand traps and board breakers, by the way, because that will, I feel like they have anti-synergy, either go hand traps or board breakers. Personally, I like hand traps, but if you like board breakers, you could try that. And, and certain metas do fall for board breakers instead of hand traps. I just think we're in a hand trap meta right now. Uh, but so I would run 20 starters, 20 hand traps, and then the 20 utility that we talked about. And that can be uh, your millings, uh, your bricks, uh, and any other tech cards that you feel are really good that you can maybe easily access and grab. With those 20-20-20 ratios, your 60 card deck is going to be doing better than any other 60 card deck. Uh, not Well, maybe not any other one. A majority of 60 card decks because now you have consistency and your starters and traps and utility and you'll have a significant advantage over those decks mathematically and that's how we can beat these 40 card decks a lot of 60 card decks do not have uh these level of consistencies and that's why they fail they're really hard to deck build around it's very hard to deck build so if you like this video and you liked learning about numbers and math, I welcome you to subscribe and like this video. I have more in-depth mathematical videos. I just did one about Psyframe Gamma last week. I recommend you take a look at them. I love doing these kind of videos. So if you like this, I'll see you guys next time. Duel on, mathematicians.